What's up YouTube, this is Detroit Borg with a look at the speed and performance of the newest Mac Mini introduced in July 2011. Now this is the standard configuration, so this gives us a 2.3 GHz Core i5 dual core Sandy Bridge Intel processor, and we get two gigs of standard RAM, a 500 gig hard disk drive running at 5400 RPM, and we get some integrated graphics from Intel, the Intel Graphics 3000 HD, which shares 288 megs with the main memory. Now for just $200 more, you can upgrade to the next standard configuration, which will give you a 2.5 gigahertz Core i5 processor, four gigs of RAM. You still get the 500 gig hard disk drive, but you get some discrete graphics. So you get the AMD Radeon HD 6630M, which gives you 256 megs of dedicated GDDR5 memory. Now my Mac Mini is connected to my home theater as my home theater PC, and we're gonna go over to my television to shoot these demos. But what I want to do first is test the disk speed. So first we're going to do an example. We're going to load a bunch of apps all at once to see how it handles this. Now keeping in mind that the Mac Mini has a hard disk drive running at 5400 RPMs, not 7200, but 5400. So that's a, really a mobile hard disk drive. So it's pretty slow. Now couple that with the fact that it only has two gigs of standard RAM, loading all these apps all at the same time really chokes the system. So you can see here that this, things are really loading very slowly. You really don't want to toss this much at the Mac Mini. Now, if you had a SSD inside this Mac Mini, things would go a lot more smoothly. But unfortunately, getting an SSD in a Mac Mini is very expensive. It actually costs about $600 to upgrade. Now, running our disk speed test, we can see that the write speed on the Mac Mini runs about 70 and the read runs a little under 80 megs. But if we look at the MacBook Air with an SSD, that runs a little under 250 on the write and a little under 270 on the read. So there's a huge difference there in terms of overall performance. So that explains why the Mac book air loads apps quite a bit faster now next up is geekbench which will take a look at the overall system performance of the mac mini give us a number and then allow us to compare that to other mac systems so the mac mini scores about 6900 on geekbench while the MacBook Pro scores about 6972. Now this is interesting because the MacBook Pro shares the same 2.3 gigahertz Core i5 processor. It also shares the same integrated graphics processor from Intel, but the MacBook Pro gives us four gigs of RAM and the version I'm testing here has the optional SSD. So I was expecting a wider margin here. Now there are some variables to take into consideration here. The MacBook Pro is older. I've had it for a few months. I've been using it regularly and I have just recently upgraded to Lion. It's not a clean install like the new Mac Mini. But the other thing to consider here is the MacBook Pro is mobile. Therefore, the system has been optimized for battery life and heat dissipation. The Mac Mini, of course, is a desktop computer. Many of those mobile considerations and limitations aren't an issue here, so they can tune it better for performance. Now, just taking a look briefly at the Geekman scores of some of the other new Macs currently sold right now, we got the new 11-inch MacBook Air scoring about 5468, and the top-of-the-line iMac with everything you can throw at it scoring about 12716. Now, next up is the gaming performance of the Mac Mini. And first, we're going to take a look at Cinebench, which will give us some scores to compare to other computers. So on the OpenGL score, we get about 11.95 frames per second, and the CPU test scores about 2.52 points. Now, not surprisingly, this is very similar to the MacBook Pro, which on the OpenGL scores about 12.10 frames per second, and the CPU scores about 2.58 points. Now, of course, these two computers share the exact same CPU and the exact same integrated graphics processor. Now, if we compare that to the MacBook Air, that scored about 10.98 frames per second and 1.91 points on the CPU. Now, that's not too far below the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini, thanks largely to the fact that they're also using the same integrated HD graphics processor from Intel. Now, all of these computers pale in comparison to my top-of-the-line iMac with the uh, discrete processor, the AMD Radeon HD 6970M with 2 gigs of GDDR5 RAM. On the OpenGL score, we get 43.5 frames per second, and the CPU scored about 6.84 points. Now, you can't get that performance out of any configuration of Mac Mini, but you can get better performance if you opt for that $200 upgrade to get the discrete graphics processor. Now, gaming on the Mac Mini is a little surprising, just like on the MacBook Air. Considering those stats, you would expect nothing could be done with the Mac Mini, but indeed, it plays pretty well. I actually don't see any frame dropping uh, when playing this game. 
on the Mac Mini. It does sort of break down when, when scenes get more intense. So if there's a lot of fighting, if there's a lot of figures on the screen, things do break down. So it's not a great, great computer for gaming. I wouldn't recommend it, but you certainly can get it done. And like I said on the MacBook Air, I consider this to be a side benefit. I wouldn't buy the Mac Mini for this purpose, but it's nice to have when you want it. So in conclusion, it looks like the Mac Mini performs very similarly to the standard configuration of the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is almost twice as expensive as the Mac Mini. So I think this is a pretty good value. The only thing I would recommend is upgrading the RAM from two gigs to at least four gigs, but do that yourself. You can do it much more cheaply than Apple. In fact, I will have have a video on that uh, in my next video. We're basically going to upgrade this from 2 gigs to 8 gigs. Then we're going to test the performance to see if we see any big difference. So stay tuned for that. So once again, guys, this is Detroit Borg. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.